I'm Sam and I was recently in the hospital for a couple of days. I also should let you know that I am a medical clown or at least a medical clinical clinical training. Okay, so what a medical clown does is they work with a patient, usually a child, and they work with their emotional in order to help heal the physical. That's kind of what it is. And if you're a little confused, keep watching and it'll make sense. Okay, so I was in the hospital for just a couple days for abdominal pains and in the time that I was there, because I am a medical clown, I looked at it through that lens and that affected how I perceived the experience because I was applying concepts and ideas of medical clowning to my stay at the hospital. I stayed at the Good Samaritan Hospital and my experience was mostly a very positive one. The doctors, nurses and staff were usually very kind and understanding and communicative and so that really helped my experience there. They don't have medical clowns however, so I had to be my own clown. Now there was a time when I was in the ER and I was probably in what was the worst pain that I was having. I, everything hurt and, and I was crying and it was terrible. And my roommate who was there and who drove me at 2 in the morning to the hospital and I'm very thankful for that. She saw the pain that I was in and she pulled out a, she pulled up a video on her phone um, of, and, and maybe I'll show it here. It's a video of cute little cartoon cats and they're in the marching band and they're silly and they're dancing. It's a really silly video. Under different circumstances, that video might have made me smile or maybe chuckle at most. But I was in a situation where I needed laughter. I needed the laughter desperately to take me away from the pain that I was going through. And I was willing, more than willing, to give in to that need of laughter if I had the opportunity. So, when I watched the video, I laughed as if it was the funniest thing I had ever seen in my entire life. So if I wasn't willing to laugh at that moment, if I wanted to stay and wallow in my terrible pain, then I would have stayed and wallowed in my terrible pain. But because the pain was so big, my need for laughter was massive. My need for anything to get me out of that situation was massive. And so when I saw that video, I gave in to that need. And it was a very positive thing because for the two minutes that that video lasts, those little dancing cats were my clown in my mind. And they were, in a way, painkillers in my body because for those two minutes I was not focused on the pain, I was focused on dancing cats. The patient needs to have this openness to laugh and to get out of that hospitalness and into the world that the clown opens for them. And the clown needs to be in tune with that need and with the patient's openness and adapt accordingly. One of the first things that we learned with medical clowning is that you need the patient's permission to be in the room. So you usually enter and in some form, verbally or not, you need to ask for permission to enter the hospital room. If the patient says no, then you need to leave soon. You need to respect the patient's needs. And the reason for that is the hospital does not usually give the patient any sort of agency or control. The people will come in and they will draw your vitals and, and draw your blood and you don't really have a say in, in the procedures and, and the medicine that you need to do, but you kind of need to trust your doctor and they'll do stuff to you and you don't really have a say in much of it. The hospital, renders you somewhat powerless and your sickness also renders you powerless over your own body. So being in the hospital is not a situation where the patient really has any sort of power. So you might be thinking, oh, the patient says no and the clown leaves. The clown really didn't do anything. But the truth is in that brief exchange between the clown and the patient where the clown asked for permission and the child had the opportunity to say no, the clown gave the child a bit of agency. So yes, it is extremely important to be open to laughter and to be open to getting out of the pain situation. But as a clown, it is also important to know the level of openness with your patient and to know whether that's just not the time for that right now. Now, I know I said I had a mostly positive experience with the doctors and nurses and staff at the Good Samaritan Hospital, but there was a nurse that had a, a moment that I, I was a bit troubled by it. Okay, so I was in the ER, I was a little hazy from morphine and stuff, 
but I did not have any family with me. My parents live outside of the country, and so I knew that I needed to step in and, in a way, be my own parent. And what would my parents do? They would keep track of everything that was going on in my body. They would be the brains of the operation. They would know exactly what's going on. And so even though I was hazy from all those drugs, I had a need to know what was going on inside my own body. So usually I would ask, you know, before anyone inserts anything in me, what is this? How much of it is this? What is the effect that it does in my body? And for most of the time, the nurses and the staff and all that were very kind and would explain everything and I really appreciated that open communication. Now there was one nurse that he just kept stuff in my, putting stuff in my veins and I asked him what it was and he did, didn't really respond and so I kept asking and he called me high strung and when he did say the name of the medication, I'm not a doctor so I don't know what the freaking names of the medications are so I was like well what is it, what does it do? And he was like, it's an antibiotic, like, I already told you. I have a right to ask and to know the substances that are going in my body. That nurse's attitude, that exchange was brief, but it put me in a place where I felt extremely powerless and extremely disrespected. As a patient, I was a hindrance. There was not a lot of emotional intelligence on his part, and that led to a perhaps a lack of empathy or compassion, where he had an attitude with me, even though I was clearly in a situation where I was already powerless, I was already in pain. And with a medical clown, you need to have an emotional intelligence. And that is often overlooked. People often brush off medical clowns as if they weren't real medical staff. But emotional intelligence is extremely important. For example, at one point when the IV was being first inserted into me, the IV device, I hate that. I hate needles. I hate anything going in me. And the nurse was so kind. She put it in me and then she took out another one and she removed it from the packaging and she let me touch it and it was um, sort of a soft, uh, gooey thing. It was plastic, it was a small tube, and having it in my hand um, made me realize how small of a device it was, and it um, helped me because I couldn't see, I couldn't move, everything hurt, and so I couldn't see what was in my arm, but because I was in pain, and because I hate those things, I imagined it was like this huge, terrible thing, but when she showed it to me, it was an actual, like, tiny thing going in my veins. I was like really thankful for her for doing that. And um, that shows compassion and emotional intelligence from her that the other doctor did not have. So it's important as a clown and as a doctor of any kind to know the patient's needs, the emotional needs, their physical needs. Um, often the emotional needs are overlooked, which is very upsetting. And as a medical clown, you cannot do that. But as a regular doctor, they often do, and that's very upsetting. Something that people often need is a need for control. And as a medical clown, we will sense that need in the patient and we provide it to them in any way possible. And so the clown will make a fool out of themselves, thus placing the patient in a situation where they're the ones in control and we're the foolish clowns and they control us and what we do. And so when I asked that doctor what was in my veins, that was me trying to get a little bit of control. I'm not going to keep him from putting the thing in my veins, but I want to know what it is and how much and what it does. And that is not an unreasonable request. Having control, that little bit of control is the least that I could ask for. And for him to um, not answer or to answer with a snarky remark is in a way denying me that request. And as doctors or medical clowns, we don't do that. We listen to the patient and we give them what they need. They are there because they need us. So in the hospital, you might not have control over your body. Your body might be destroying itself and swelling up and exploding in blood, but you do have some sort of control over your mind. And the clown is there to provide that control with mostly children patients, but as adults who go into the hospitals, one of the ways that we can retain hope um, and that will help us through our experience and will help us through healing is if we um, acknowledge our minds and we are in sync with it and we sync it with our bodies and we listen to our minds and our thoughts and our emotional needs. And as a medical clown, I can only hope to give the patients a hint of that control, a hint of that agency that I gave myself. So yeah, that's, that was a bit of a serious video, um, but I was in the hospital and I had these reflections as a medical clown and I felt like they were worth sharing.
now I'm doing a lot better. I'm gonna be seeing a specialist to know exactly what's going on with my body because I'm not super sure. But yeah, um, comment below if you've had an experience where you were in the hospital and you had to be your own clown or you had to be someone else's clown. And um, subscribe and like this video and share it with people because that would be really nice of you. And also I have a Facebook page now so I am gonna put the link in the description or something. And if you wanna go check that out and um, follow it and stuff, that would be really nice of you. I would really appreciate that. So, yay. Thank you.